The Angela Anaconda short film at the start of the Digimon movie was pretty despised among Digimon fans, but let's actually explain why it existed and if it really did cause a young Digimon fan's parents to divorce. I'm not sure if any other name sends a shiver down Digimon fan's spines like Angela Anaconda's. Some say Angela Anaconda is the worst part of the Digimon movie, others say Angela is the first human to digivolve, beating the Digimon Frontier cast to the punch by a whole two years. Okay, I think like five people say that, but I am one of them and this is my video. I'm also joking around, but I want to dive into what is certainly one of the strangest things to come out of Fox Kids' already strange version of Digimon the movie, and that's the 3 minute and 50 second long short film at the start of the movie starring the queen of petty revenge fantasies, Angela Anaconda. Angela Anaconda was an animated series that aired on Fox Kids just like Digimon running from 1999 to 2001 and wrapping up after 3 seasons. It chronicled the life and times of an imaginative and very articulate 8 year old girl who often found herself daydreaming about outrageous ways to exact violent revenge on her French culture-loving bully, Nanette Manoir. Each episode, Angela was joined by her classmates, the smart and hungry Gina Lash, Italian stereotype Johnny Abadi, and young Rivers Cuomo of the rock band Weezer. And you've no doubt noticed already, but it has this incredibly unique paper doll 2.5D art style that, despite looking homemade, was a shockingly state-of-the-art. These days, we praise a lot of 2.5D video games like South Park, The Stick of Truth, or Inside, or Unravel that kind of simulate a 2D side scroller but are actually built in 3D, Angela Anaconda was doing that all the way back in 1999. I think there are two definitive deep dives into Angela Anaconda here on YouTube, Billiam's hilarious Angela Anaconda was weird video, and Amazon Kane's fascinating the making of Angela Anaconda. I'll spare you all the details here in the interest of time, but I'm linking to those two videos in this one's description. But the last bit of setup and personal context before we talk the short film crossover is that I quite liked Angela Anaconda as a kid and legitimately did not realize that the art style was such nightmare fuel until I hit my 20s and started talking about it with more people. I grew up in Canada where we had a lot of weird looking shows, sticking around, reboot, nanalan, so I never thought twice about the art style and just enjoyed Angela's weird misadventures. I also learned later in life the show was made in Toronto and actually one of its animators was Ian DeSaw from the band Billy Talent, which as a Canadian automatically makes me like Angela Anaconda a lot more than the average human. So the short, why? It's the year 2000, you've seen the commercials for Digimon the movie on Fox Kids while you're watching Digimon Zero Two on Saturday morning. The movie event you've been waiting for is coming to theaters this fall. You go to the theater and after the previews and the 20th Century Fox logo, the first bit of animation you see is a paper craft girl and her friends lined up outside a theater to see the movie you thought you were here to see, the Digimon movie. I've not been able to find official documented justification for why Fox put this thing in front of the movie, but if you pause to think about it for a few moments, it's fairly obvious. Two years earlier, A Bug's Life premiered with the short film Jerry's Game at the beginning, commencing a trend of short films kicking off the massively popular Pixar our animated features. Then you had 1999's Pokemon the first movie, beginning with Pokemon Pikachu's Vacation, which was largely there to pad out the film's runtime. By this point, most of us know that Digimon the movie was three short films cut and pasted together, but it seemed Fox was a bit nervous about the film's runtime, and perhaps thought it might be worth using Digimon's big moment to promote another one of its shows, Angela Anaconda. Personally, I'd have loved to have seen a Monster Rancher or Spider-Man Unlimited short before the Digimon movie, but my guess is they chose a show that had lower ratings in an effort to bump up interest in that show. That's purely speculation on my part as I couldn't find Angela Anaconda TV ratings from the year 2000 in my research, but it wouldn't have been the first time Fox Kids used one of its more popular shows to prop up and advertise another one of its series that needed a bit of help. I'm looking at you Power Rangers in Space cross Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation crossover. So that's my best attempt at giving you the why this Angela Anaconda short is in front of Digimon the movie. So the short itself, in my opinion the short is pretty harmless. It's of course there to advertise Angela Anaconda to a captive audience of Digimon fans, but it's also meant to hype up kids who, much like Angela in the short film, just sat down in their town's movie theater to see Digimon on the big screen. Seeing Angela and the entire child population of Tapwater Springs hyped as hell to see Digimon in theaters probably made real world kids feel validated in their love of Digimon. Like maybe you didn't have too many real world friends who liked Digimon as much as you did, maybe they were Pokemon fans, or your parents reluctantly took you to the theaters just to make you happy. 
seeing all these kids fired up to see Digimon, even though they were fictional kids, you were probably like, see, Digimon is cool, I told you, dad. The short is very much a bite-sized episode of Angela Anaconda. You meet her friends, Nanette screws them all over, Angela gets lost in a revenge fantasy, though this time it's involving her digivolving into Angelamon, becoming the first human in the franchise to digivolve. This joke can't possibly be true, but because the Digimon movie came out roughly two years before Digimon Frontier, I love the idea that Japanese Digimon writers were looking for inspiration on how to follow up tamers, encountered the English version of the Digimon movie, saw Angela digivolve, and were like, that's not bad, that could work. Obviously that's not what happened, but I like to think it did. There is a distinct style difference in the writing of the Angela Anaconda short as compared to the rest of the short films that make up the core of the Digimon movie. As much as I defend Angela Anaconda generally, I will admit the rest of the movie's jokes are way funnier than anything in the Angela short. This can be explained thanks to a 2017 interview with Jeff Nimoy, known by most Digimon fans as the voice of Tentomon, but who also wrote a ton of early Digimon, including the Digimon movie. He told Modern Gaffa that although he was responsible for stitching the three Digimon short films into one for the movie, he had nothing to do with the Angela short. Not only that, he didn't even know it was going to be in the film until the night of the premiere. Quote, ironically, I didn't even see the Angela Anaconda prologue until the premiere. So who did write it? Hilariously on IMDb, nobody is taking credit for the Angela Anaconda short film. However, there is a sort of alternate universe version of the short, a full 10 minute episode of Angela Anaconda called Good Seats that aired in January 2001, three months after Digimon the movie's theatrical premiere. This episode was written by Holly Huckins, Michael Kramer, Laura McCreary, and Kent Redeker. It's an extended version of the plot with the kids of Tapwater Springs stoked to see not Digimon the movie, but interstellar mega giants versus Mechanitar. The Digimon posters and terminology have been swapped out, although Angela's megamorph form still resembles Ty. Same with Gina and Johnny who have their TK and Izzy style outfits on. Considering the episode credits don't say anything like adapted from blank script or based on a story by blank, Huckins, Kramer, McCreary, and Redeker are most likely the suspects for the short film's writers. I only very recently learned about one other sort of Digimon cross Angela Anaconda crossover thing thanks to a commenter on one of my videos. Both Digimon and Angela Anaconda had original Halloween themed music on the free CD 13 Days of Halloween Rhythm and Booze that came packed in with Count Chocula, Booberry, and Frankenberry cereal in America in the year 2001. If you were lucky enough to own the CD, you'd hear the Baja men singing It's Spooky in Here, the Digimon Halloween song, and Sue Rose, the voice of Angela, singing I'm Gonna Scare You, the Angela Anaconda Halloween song. But obviously the crossover that most fans know and remember is the short film before Digimon the movie, which we've already discussed. As a fan of both shows at the time, I never had a problem with it, but I do sort of understand its infamy, especially if you only like Digimon or you discover Digimon the movie years after both shows were off the air. The fact that the Angela Anaconda short is baked into the Digimon movie VHS and DVD, yeah, I guess that's a bit rough. One thing I find very funny is that in the Angela Anaconda Wikipedia, there is no mention of Digimon anywhere on that page. I like the idea that Digimon fans have spent all this time roasting Angela and pretending the crossover short never happened. Meanwhile, Angela Anaconda fans have also tried to erase the short film from the history books like they're embarrassed to have anything to do with Digimon fans. And finally, there's the divorce. Of course, I couldn't do a video about Angela Anaconda and Digimon without talking about the widespread bit of internet lore, something a lot of people have just accepted as a true thing that definitely happened. The story about how the Angela Anaconda short film apparently caused a young Digimon fan's parents to divorce. The story with over 12,000 upvotes on Reddit and countless reposts across the internet is ostensibly a first-hand story about a now adult millennial whose parents separated as a result of the Angela Anaconda short film. In the post, the anonymous user recalls begging his parents to go see Digimon the movie. Parents agree everyone's looking forward to some bonding time. They decide they can afford popcorn and drinks. The kid notes that the parents look happy for once. Until the Angela Anaconda short comes on, the parents' English isn't very great, and the little boy can't understand what's happening on screen and who these weird paper people are. He begins crying and his parents pull him out of the theater. Mom and dad start blaming each other for going to the wrong film. Dad throws the popcorn. Both parents are arguing. The boy is crying. They drive off in a rush. They get into a car accident in the parking lot. Then dad moves out of the house one month later. It's quite the story and I am here to tell you it's completely made up. Okay, I can't tell you that with 100% certainty, but I am personally fully convinced this is a fake story. Where to begin? One, by the storyteller's own logic, the parents' relationship was rocky prior to seeing the film. And that's assuming this story is even real. We're giving too much credit to this anonymous internet post already. Two, again, assuming the story is real, the first frame of the Angela Anaconda short film is a big close-up of Digimon the movie. I have no idea how you could see Digimon on the screen, hear the words Digimon spoken over and over, and go, I'm in the wrong theater. 
Three, being in the wrong theater is literally the plot of the Angela Anaconda short film. This anonymous user didn't just make up their story, they ripped it off from Angela Anaconda the short. But a quick scroll through the big Reddit post has people explaining that green text is used on that site to indicate when a post is meant to be taken as a joke. Googling what does green text on 4chan mean confirms this as well. So as funny as it is to tell fellow 90s and 2000s kids at hangouts and in group chats, hey remember the Angela Anaconda short before the Digimon movie? It caused a divorce. As funny as that is, this story is not real. Maybe somewhere out there, somebody else's parents saw the Digimon movie and it really did kickstart a divorce, but the infamous story everyone shares blew up because it's fun to believe and it contributes to the existing anti-Angela narrative. In conclusion, you won't find me trying to argue that the Angela Anaconda short film in front of the Digimon movie was the right move or that it was amazing, but I completely understand why it's there. From Fox Kids wanting to add length to their already cut and pasted film, them wanting to emulate Pixar and Pokemon Pokemon, who had short films in front of their animated features, and wanting to use the height of Digimon's popularity to try and promote another one of Fox Kids' properties, its existence kind of makes sense. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the short film and what other weird crossovers do you remember that were like this and the Power Rangers Cross Ninja Turtles episode. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.